All right, guys, let's dive right in here. So this is all my EDC stuff. This is my everyday carry. Every job I get to, all of this is in this bag and comes in with me. I do this daily as a professional handyman. Let's just start real quick with a bag. This is CLC. I got this at Ace Hardware. They run about a hundred bucks a couple years ago when I bought it. And I saw one the other day that's still around a hundred bucks. So that's a pretty good deal. And what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna go through all of this and I'm gonna load the bag up as we go through it. So the first big thing obviously is my drill. I use this one or another one that's basically exactly the same one, but the important thing is that it's a hammer drill. And so is the other one. The other one has a nice little clip on it that I need to attach to this one too. But my drill obviously goes everywhere with me. I just put it upside down in the bag like that. Next, let's see here. Let's go ahead and do the electrical stuff. So this is basically a super cheap little multimeter. It's not insanely useful. It doesn't do everything that a fluke is going to do, but it's really quick. I can throw it in my pocket. It's kind of a backup more than anything. And I keep those down here in this front pocket. Same thing with the Fluke. This is a really nice handy one to have. Fluke does make, in my opinion, the best multimeters you can get. And this is, of course, just mostly for electrical troubleshooting, but that also goes in the front pocket of this bag for easy access. And then throw those down. We've got this voltage tester. I'm probably gonna take this out of the bag soon because honestly, I never really use it. I've got the little multimeter and the big multimeter. This guy doesn't come in handy too much, but he's in the bag for now. And then finally, for electrical, we do have an outlet tester. This is absolutely necessary. Make sure you get one that will test GFCIs as well. And it's got the codes on it, and those codes are gonna tell you exactly what is wrong uh, when you plug these in and they don't work. So we throw that in the front pocket too. And then, of course, this guy here. Now, I do have a pair of automatics that actually just strip the wire off in one fell swoop for you, but I keep these in the bag as a backup, and those typically go inside this back pocket here. Next, where are we gonna start? Okay, how about the drill bits? This is just one nice little set. I go through a lot of these, I throw them away when they get dull, I get new sets, and then I have another bin that when half of these get dull and I need to get a new nice set to go in the bag, I just take them all out of this box and toss them in that bin, and that bin stays in the van for backups for when I lose one or two or three or four. And that just goes down here with a drill as well. Next, obviously, you're always gonna need some kind of razor blade. Now, this one stays on the bag. I clip it to the side here, but I also usually have one on my pocket. I have one in the cab of the van. I keep them scattered about. They're always handy to have. You don't wanna be caught without them. So I just keep them around all the time. These are for garbage disposals. These are quarter inch right here. I keep one on the outside. If you all don't know, this is what you break a garbage disposal free with on the underside. You just stick it in the armature and rotate it back and forth. So I keep one on the outside and one on the inside. I try to have two of them because half the time I just go ahead and leave them behind with the tenants when I'm done so that they know how to use them in the future. And then this is just my bit holder. I've got a, I've got Phillips, I've got T10 and T25. T10 being what you're gonna need for exhaust fan motors and T25 is for exterior wood screws. I've also got a pilot bit in here and just a random assortment of other bits that I use semi-frequently. And we'll throw that one in this pocket here. Next, of course, is all my pliers and dikes. So I keep one large set, and I may get rid of these actually. These may not stay in the kit because I don't actually use this giant set very often, but I wanna have the option of using this giant set. So I keep it with me. And we're gonna put that up here. Actually, we're gonna put that, yeah, up in the front. I'm trying to remember where I keep everything now, and it's taller, so I'll put it in the middle. That stays in there. Same thing with these guys. I use both of these far more often and they can occupy basically the same space here. 
And then a pair of needle nose. I don't need them too often, but I need them often enough that they do go ahead and still stay in the bag. Same thing with the dikes, although I do use these slightly more frequently. Now, something you're gonna notice about my setup here is uh, I'm not trying to show off anything. None of these are really name brand. None of these are expensive. None of these are nice. This is all just the basic stuff that I use all the time. Tools are tools as long as they get the job done. This is my screen spline tool. If you're a handyman, you're probably gonna be building some screens. If you're taking them to Ace Hardware and having Ace Hardware build them, you're wasting a lot of time driving back and forth. So I suggest just getting one of these tools and teaching yourself how to do the screens. We'll pop that baby. Nope, not in there. Yeah, he goes here. Let's move on to uh, screwdrivers. First, we'll do the little tiny ones. There's, there's some important ones. This is a smaller Phillips here. It's useful for things like thermostats or any small electronic items, home security systems and stuff. So we pop that into these nice little spots here. This is my T10. Again, this is another T10. This is for the exhaust fans. When you change the motors, it's almost always going to be a T10. You're gonna use this all the time. So keep it in your EDC bag. And then this is just a regular common slotted, and this is mostly for all the things in the bathroom attached to the wall, like towel racks, toilet paper holders, etc. They're gonna be held in with a set screw, and that set screw is either going to be a flathead, a very small common flathead screwdriver, or it's going to be Allen wrenches. Let me show you the Allen wrench kit real quick. Nothing too special about it, just picked it up at Home Depot but you're gonna want the uh, 1 16th, which is right there. And this is always, 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 always in the bag here. I believe, yeah, here we go. I keep it right there. And all of this stuff moves around, you know. This is where I keep everything currently, but I'm always rearranging and trying to find ways to make it work better. And then of course, We've got our regular Phillips and our regular common slotted. I usually just carry the long ones because there's almost never a situation where the long one won't work, but there are frequently situations where I need a long one. So those are just always going to be the long ones. We pop them right in there. Same thing with this little flat head. This is, I use more for garbage disposals because that's when I do need a shorter one. So this can be used for the screws on the garbage disposal as well as to stick into the little circular notch that you grab to unscrew or screw in the disposal itself. And we just pop that right in there with those two. Now this one is special. This little common slotted here, its only purpose is for digging out drywall so that I can install, uh, oh heck, what do you call them? Now I'm brain farting on the name of them. Uh, toggle bolts, toggle bolts. So the toggle bolts that I use anytime I install towel racks, toilet paper holders, etc., I always mount them with toggle bolts. And the width of this is just the right width for the toggle section to go through the wall. So I have a hole already if I'm replacing one, or if I'm not, I make one small hole. And oftentimes, guys, you can just use your regular Phillips on your drill and just drive a hole into that real quick. But then this, I just use by hand to wallow out that hole for the toggle bolt. And that's the only thing that this particular screwdriver is used for. And we'll just pop it in there. Next is crescent wrenches, three different sizes. These will get you through just about anything that you need a wrench for. That's why you're not gonna see a socket set or any kind of wrench set inside this bag. And we put them over here on the other side with the larger items. Next is my hammer, and to tell you the truth, you would think as a handyman I would be needing to use a hammer frequently, but I'm really not. This is just a cheapo little $11 hammer from Home Depot. I don't really use it much though, so there's a decent chance it's actually going to get taken out of this bag, and I'll just grab a hammer for jobs that I know I'm going to need one on. we we'll pop that guy in there. This comes in pretty handy. This is just a husky... It's just a like a camp saw. As you can see, a lot of my stuff has rust on it. It's been, uh, it's cold and rainy here this year. So things, my tools are getting condensation in the van, which is why I'm doing this video today because I'm actually gonna start rubbing all of these down and protecting them today. The weather's just super strange, but this will take the place of just about any saw that you need. If I'm doing any cutting on materials, I'm typically gonna do that outside if I have any power saws or power tools that I need to use to cut stuff. I try not to do that in the house. 
And then this guy here, this is one of my favorites. This is a cold chisel that I bought probably 18 years ago and I've never stopped using it. You cannot make this thing dull. You cannot des uh, destroy it at all. And I may not use it quite often enough to need it to stay in the bag, but it stays in the bag so I don't lose it. I will never lose this tool. This is too important to me and it's too handy. So we can pop that. Actually, let's pop that one down into this slot here. Five and one, this is really honestly, a five and one is more like a 1,000 and one. You can just use this for just about everything. Look at that, I need to get it cleaned off too. Get that junk off of there, but that's what I'll be doing today. But yeah, this is my five and one. You can use it, you know, if you're patching little teeny tiny holes with your mud, that's more than enough blade width there. If I'm doing actual drywall work where I'm gonna need my knives, I bring them in separately. I have a kit for those, but this guy, is literally always with me and is absolutely indispensable. So we'll pop him. Actually, I wanna see it. There we go, so now I know where he's at. Paintbrush, these are the cheapos. I do have nice paintbrushes that stay in a kit. This is just a cheap little Ace Hardware paintbrush just for teeny tiny little touch-up jobs. It's cheap enough that you can just throw it away when you're done with it. But I always keep one of those handy just in case I'm touching up a little bit of paint. Uh, how about we come over here and look at this guy. So this is my, just my regular little chisel. Mostly what I use this for is front doors, like exterior doors, sometimes interior, where I need to move the plates, like the strike plates for the doorknob and the deadbolt. This is great for just doing a nice clean job of chiseling some material away. And we'll throw him back here with cold chisel. Next is my pipe wrench. I honestly don't use this too much either, and it's heavy, so it may come out, but it seems like every time I start seriously considering removing the pipe wrench from the kit, I realize, like, I need to use it almost right away. As soon as I start seriously considering taking it out of the kit, I end up needing it in the kit, so it stays in, and it probably will continue to stay in. I just wish it wasn't so heavy. I'll probably get a titanium one at some point, little flashlight and to tell you the truth i don't use this much either because my phone has a flashlight and my phone's always with me and that's typically what i end up using but nonetheless i do have the flashlight here and i keep it out here on the outside and i keep this little piece dangling out so i can grab it and yank it out quickly and easily torpedo level this one also lights up and it's magnetic so it covers all of my level needs i do have other levels that i keep in the van but most of the time, say 80% of the time, this guy will take care of just about anything that you need to take care of with a level on the job. Stick that guy over there. There we go. Same thing with the tape measure. This stays in here, but I also have a bigger one that I keep in here, a Stanley 35 footer, and I keep a Stanley 35 footer on my hip. Now the other 35 footer, the big one that stays in the bag, I don't know where it is right now. It's not in the bag like it should be. It's probably floating around the van somewhere, but this can go just about anywhere in the bag. And it's basically just a backup in case I don't have one on my hip. Maybe I removed it and left it in another room. So that's just kind of always with me and always near me. A few extra blades. Obviously you always want to have extra blades for your bag. Always want to have some blue tape. It just comes in handy all the time, just so you can easily mark things and come back to them. And I just shove that in pretty much any pocket. It's usually actually out just floating around in here because I use it so often. And then another favorite of mine, big, big, big favorite is these tiny little files. Another trick you're gonna find on latch plates on exterior doors and interior is when they don't latch properly, when they don't fit properly. Once you've gone over the hinges and you've gone over everything else and you verify the door securely installed, you can just file away a little bit of the strike plate with these guys. So these are literally always in the kit and they get used not every day, but almost every day. And then there's a few extra things that I keep in here that I didn't have on the table yet. One is gonna be caulk, so I'm gonna have clear silicone. I'm gonna have this Alex Fast Dry Paintable. This is mostly for just touching up little nail holes in the wall and stuff. And then I'm gonna have some kitchen and bath caulk for sealing countertops. I'm always gonna have a few writing utensils. 
And finally, last but not least, is just some trash bags so you can stay clean and always be picking up your mess. These actually aren't gonna fit where they used to fit, but I can just throw them in here. So this right here is my entire EDC kit. It zips up all the way in this bag. It's not too heavy, you know, it's not light either, but it's not too heavy. And it stays in the van with me at all times. It goes into every single job. And I would say 80% of the jobs that I do, maybe as high as 90, this is all of the hand tools that I need. The only other thing that I need are the larger power tools. And I know that I'm gonna grab those before I go into the job. So this is it guys, that's my EDC bag. It goes into every single job with me. I hope this was useful to y'all. I will be filming another one of these at a future date with better video and better audio and more explanations. But y'all have been asking for this a lot, so I wanted to make sure I got it to you. So I hope y'all are all out there killing it, and I will see you on the next one.